Hello everyone, welcome to our last video in the Intermediate Algebra series. We're going to wrap up the term with one of the most amazing objects in all of geometry, the circle. Formally speaking, a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant. This word just means have the same distance from a fixed point which we call the center of the circle and uh, notice that a line segment joining the center to any point on the circle is called a radius and even though the radius is a segment we also refer to the length of the radius simply as the radius as well so it's understood that uh, both of them are using the same terminology and uh, notice that a line segment that connects any two points on a circle is called a chord. Now, some chords have the special characteristic that they also go through the center, such as the one depicted here. Such a chord that does go through the center is called the diameter. Uh, do notice that the length of the diameter is therefore twice the length of the radius and we will be needing that in some of the situations that we will encounter. In this video we'll learn about two different forms for the equation of a circle. First we'll look at the most useful form which is called the standard form. It's also known as the center radius form because it will essentially contain all the information we need about the center and the radius in it, as we will see in a moment. And in order to understand where that form, the center radius form, comes from, we have to remember the distance formula, which gives us the distance between any two points in a plane. Now, for two general points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, we know that the distance formula which we obtained using the Pythagorean theorem is given by d equals the square root of x2, quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus quantity y2 minus y1 squared. Now, if we take this distance formula and apply it to these two particular points, here we have a circle with center at hk and radius r and this p is just any general point which could be anywhere along the circle now we've already given this distance a name we call it the radius so if we can find that distance that's going to be equal to r so if we let uh, the point P of XY play the role of X2, Y2 and let the center HK play the role of X1, Y1, we end up with this application of the distance formula. So we get the square root of quantity X minus H squared plus quantity Y minus K squared equals R. And this of course itself can serve as the standard form of the equation of a circle. But being that the circle is such a beautiful object it would be nice if we could have a, a equation looking a little bit simpler with no square roots and of course we can obtain that by simply squaring both sides and when we do that the square root will go away on this side we just get that expression and on this side we get r squared so this right here is what we consider to be the standard form or now you can see why it's also called the center radius form because HK which is available in here is the center and R of course is the radius that's why it's called the center radius form XY is of course it is a general point on the circle one quick note about the way we define the circle as being the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point. Notice that this phrase right here in a plane is extremely important to mention because if we leave it open and do not say restrict it to a plane, then if you look at all the points in space that have the same distance from a fixed point, of course, 
you don't just get a circle you'll get a full sphere so this phrase here is very essential while you're defining a circle in a plane all right so we have the standard form or the center radius form of the equation of a circle written out here for us again and um, note that uh, one mistake that uh, sometimes uh, people make is thinking that the center is part of the circle the center is certainly essential and indispensable when it comes to defining a circle but notice that the center itself is not part of the circle the circle is just the ring that you see here uh, now another mistake that is very common but it's understood uh, by all what is meant is when we talk about the area of a circle the circle of course is just a two-dimensional linear object if you just break it open at some point think of it as a wire and split it open you you end up with just a piece of wire in a straight line so when we talk about the area of a circle we're not actually talking about the area of the circle itself we're talking about the area of the disc that is enclosed by the circle so that uh, we're clear on what is meant by that common uh, misnomer and uh, that's basically the standard form of the equation of a circle let's put it to use all right here we're going to graph the circle with equation quantity x minus 2 squared plus quantity y minus 3 squared equals 25. first we're going to find the center and the radius and we're also going to find the coordinates of four points I have uh, indicated here on the graph we call this the east west north south points and they help us uh, graph it very easily if we're doing this by hand i have utilized uh, the use of technology for the graph we'll be doing all the stuff requiring brain power ourselves by hand but uh, trust me this will look a lot better than me doing it by hand so that's why we utilize technology here so we'll go ahead and compare the equation that's given to standard form and we will realize that it is indeed in standard form which is x minus h squared plus quantity y minus k squared equals r squared quantity is always indicated even though i sometimes may forget to say it so uh we notice that compared to this form here h will be 2 and k will be 3 be very careful because we always want to write this as a difference in standard form so if this were x plus 2 in here we would have written it as x minus negative 2 in which case uh, h would have been negative 2 but the easiest way to remember is that whatever number you see here including the sign the opposite of that will be h and the same goes for k so here we see that um, h is 2 k is 3 be careful with r because what you see here of course is not r but it's r squared because if you remember we squared both sides of the distance uh, equation that we had so uh, you have to ask yourself what do you square to get 25 and that of course is 5 and that will be r so r here is 5 so the center will be at 2 3 and the radius is 5 so we went ahead and plotted the center here at 2 3 and uh, the way that we can get these four points uh, that we call the north south east west points is very easy because notice that we have C is at 2 3 we notice that E and W the east and west points will have will be at the same height so at the same Y value so the only thing that's going to change for E and W relative to the center is going to be the X value. So for getting the coordinates of E, we're going to take the X coordinate for the center and simply add the radius to it, which is 5. So 2 plus 5 will give us 
seven so the coordinates of the east point will be seven comma and of course it's at the same y value so three for the west point we do the same thing we start at two and then this time we'll subtract five so we get to negative three and the y value will be the same so it'll be at three of course that can be seen from the graph but you need to know how to get it because this graph obviously won't be provided all right so for the north point and the south point we notice that the x value will be the same and what's going to change are the y values so we can start the writing those out by filling out what we already know we already know the x value will be 2 so for the y value of the north point we'll just add the radius which is 5 to the y value of the center so 3 plus 5 will give us 8 and for the y value of the south point we'll start at y value 3 and subtract 5 to get to negative 2 and that's how we obtain those uh, four points on the circle because remember to graph the circle we're going to need some points on the circle to connect in a circular manner to get the graph and the center of course itself as you recall is not on the circle obviously so that's basically how you go about graphing uh, an equation of a circle which is already in standard form which is very helpful we will deal with situations where the equation in, is not in standard form very soon all right so here we have another equation so let me go ahead and rewrite it here so x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 11. notice that if we were to really really write this in standard form we would want to write it as a difference so we would write it as x minus negative 3 um, too many parentheses we would write it as let me just go like this x minus negative 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared and of course the number that we need to square to get 11 is the square root of 11 squared so this is now completely in standard form so it's easy to extract h k as well as r from it so we can see that the center will be so this negative 3 here will be h the 1 will be k and of course the square root of 11 will be r so the center is at negative 3 1 the radius is the square root of 11 which of course we need to get an approximate value for because that's not a very nice perfect square under that radical so let's go ahead and utilize a calculator okay so we'll just type in the square root of 11 and we'll hit enter and we get approximately 3.3 .3 for that uh, radius so um, you know it's about 3.3 .3. all right so Basically, we go ahead and start at our radius. Notice the zero zero point is here, so this has been shifted to the left. So, and of course, it works with all those transformational um, rules that we discussed as well. Remember when the change is happening at the x level and it's a plus, that's actually a shift to the left, etc. So, it works with the same kind of transformation rules we discussed previously. And of course the circle that you would be moving would uh, be like the standard x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared all right so but uh, if you want to move a circle which is centered at zero zero you would use zero for both h and k all right so um we start here at the center which is at negative three one will add 3.3 3 units to go this way to the x coordinate leave the y coordinate the same here we'll subtract 3.3 uh, 3 units 
or to want to be exact square root of 11 units and uh, we'll do the same thing here but with the y value so if we actually want to get exact coordinates for c we know we're at negative 3 1 for e we're going to be changing the x value by adding square root of 11 to it so negative 3 plus square root of 11 and it's going to be at the same height so comma 1 for w we're going to keep the y value the same so that doesn't change but the x value will be negative 3 minus square root of 11. for north and south points this time we keep the x values the same and we'll go ahead and add and subtract square root of 11 from the y value for the north point we add the square root of 11 for the south point we subtract the square root of 11 and there we have the four points that were we to do this by hand we could plot quickly and then connect in a circular manner to obtain a very nice uh, graph of our circle so just in case you do get a situation which is not a perfect uh, square um, scenario no need to panic of course here we're giving exact coordinates but if you wanted to actually do it by hand you would just go ahead and use 3.3 in each of these locations instead of the square root of 11 and you would obtain uh, some very good estimates for where those points will fall all right here we have a another another equation of a circle uh, it doesn't look as much in standard form uh, as the others did but a, a quick uh, look at it will reveal that it actually is almost in standard form so uh, let me go ahead and rewrite it here we have x squared plus y squared equals one of course we know that standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared so notice you can always take x squared and you can write it as x minus 0 squared and you can always write y squared as y minus 0 squared as well and of course what do you square to get 1 just 1 itself so there is that equation quickly put into standard form so we can see both h and k are 0 and the radius is 1 so the center is at 0 0 the radius is 1 if you go on in um, your pursuit of mathematics you'll find that this is a very very important circle it's called the unit circle it's basically a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin and this circle will play a very large role in developing uh, trigonometry once you get to your uh, trigonometry class um, and um, just to give you a quick summary uh, preview sine and cosine that you may have heard of basically live on this circle all right more on that when you get to your trig class okay so um, basically we know that the center is zero zero so we plot that point and then we go one unit to the right one unit up one unit to the left one unit down we get the four points of interest that will help us graph it by hand so of course we know the center is at zero zero so the east point will be add one to the x value of the center so it'll be at one zero the west point will be subtract one from the x value of the center so it'll be at negative one zero the north point of course and the south point will have the same x value as the center so both of those will be zero add one to the y value to get the north point subtract one from the y value to get the south point so there we have it and it's as simple as that but it's very easy to deal with circles when they are in standard or center radius form all right so now we're going to graph and then find the equation of a circle given its center and 
its diameter. Be very careful, that's not the radius, that's the diameter. So uh, obviously, um, if the diameter D is equal to 12, we know that the diameter is twice the radius as mentioned earlier. So we can replace D with 2R and just quickly solve to get R equals 6. All right, so the center here is at 5, negative 2. We can already graph it without knowing the equation because we have all the information we need. So from here, we can go left and right, up and down by the same amount, namely the radius. So um, we know that uh, the east and west points will have the same y value. And to, for the x value, we add uh, 6 to 5 to get 11 on this one for the x value and for the x value of the west point we subtract 6 from 5 so we get 5 minus 6 is negative 1 so that's going to be the coordinates of the west point for the north point and the south point we know that the x value will be the same so that's the easy part we'll fill that in for the y value we'll go ahead and add uh, 6 to negative 2 to get 4 up here and we'll subtract uh, 6 from negative 2 to get the negative 8 down here. So there are four points. There's our graph. So as far as the equation goes, that should be very easy too because we have the center is at 5, negative 2. So that means H is 5 and K is negative 2. So we're going to get x minus h squared always write down your formula without plugging anything in at first then substitute that way you minimize the chances of making mistakes so we're going to get x minus h which is 5 squared plus y minus negative 2 squared equals 6 squared just to clean that up, we end up with quantity x minus 5 squared plus quantity y plus 2 squared equals 36. And that's usually the form we would like to give the answer in. That's the cleanest form. All right, so that's how you graph and uh, find the equation of a circle, of course, in standard form, if you know the center and the radius now if you actually were to just multiply that out and move everything to the left side you'll obtain another form called the standard form so let's take a quick look at that we're going to be using this uh, rule um, which says let's do the plus case first so that's going to be the, the square of a binomial f squared plus 2fl plus l squared the other one being f minus l squared so the square of a difference we know it's very similar except the middle term becomes negative so applying the second rule the square of a difference rule first here we get x squared minus 2 times 5 times x which is 10x plus 25 plus now we're going to apply the square of a sum rule on that so we get y squared plus 2 times 2 times y which is 4y plus 4 equals 36 all right now if we uh, just go ahead and put the square terms next to each other and then we'll put the x and the y term. So minus 10x plus 4y. And then we'll go ahead and put all the constants next to each other. So we have plus 25 plus 4. And let's go ahead and bring the 36 over. So minus 36 equals 0. Now if we clean that up, we get x squared plus y squared minus 10x plus 4y now 25 uh, plus 4 is 29 minus 36 will give us minus 7 equals 0 
So here we have obtained a different form of the equation of the same circle. Remember, this one is called the standard or the center radius form. Now this one is called the general form. Now general forms in mathematics are um, utilized to for classification purposes. Like when you want to classify a group of equations and say these represent a certain kind of uh, geometric object or algebraic object. Standard or uh, forms that are more useful are utilized when we want to actually do applications of uh, the particular object we're dealing with. For example, with lines, we had ax plus by equals c. That was the what we call the more general form. And then we had the, or the standard form, we call it then, not to get confused here. We use the terminology a little bit differently with lines. But we called y equals mx plus b, which was the slope intercept form that was the one that we used more often that was the useful one so that was the linear version of this etc so or with parabolas you know we had ax y equals ax squared plus bx plus c that was what we call the standard form but the most useful form of a parabola which was the equivalent of this was the y equals a times quantity x minus h squared plus k which we call the vertex form. So with each of these objects we've studied, we've had a general form useful for classification. So like this for circles, ax plus by equals c for lines, and AX, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c for uh, parabolas or, or quadratic um, functions. Uh, but we also have a much more useful form which we actually utilize. Now, sometimes equations are given to us in this form and we actually go ahead and first write them in that form and then uh, proceed with finding uh, what we need to find. So this more general form, if you really want to look at it with uh, in the most general version, it's x squared plus y squared plus ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. We'll see that again in a few minutes. All right, so we have another problem similar to the previous one. We have the center and the radius, and we want to go ahead and graph and also find the equation. So as far as uh, beginning our graph procedure, we know that the center is at one half five fourth or basically 0.5, 1.25, same thing in a decimal form. So for the east point and the west point, we know that they'll be at the same y value. So for the x value, we're going to go ahead and for the east point, add the radius, which is square root of 2 over 2, to the x value of the center. So we get 1 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. Uh, for the west point, we'll subtract. So we get 1 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. And Now, for the north and south points, we know that they will be at the same x value. But for the y value, we'll go ahead and add the radius uh, and get 5 fourth plus square root of 2 over 2 and 5 fourth minus square root of 2 over 2. Of course, uh, with these, you can just plug into a calculator quickly to get some good approximate values if you're doing this by hand. Here, I just want to make sure that you know how to find those points, um, and then you can just nicely connect them um, and get the circle of uh, interest. Now, as far as uh, uh, the 
equation goes, we know that the standard form is x minus quantity x minus h squared plus quantity y minus k squared equals r squared. So we can see here that h is one half and k is five fourth. So we get x minus one half squared plus quantity y minus five fourth squared equals square root of two over two squared. And again, quantity square root of two over two squared. We have to make sure we square the denominator as well. All right, so just to clean it up a bit. So quantity x minus one half squared plus quantity y minus five fourth squared equals, let's do a little bit of uh, arithmetic down here. We have square root of two over two squared. So we know that's going to be square root of two squared is two and two squared is four. So we know this is just going to be one half. So we'll just write that here. And that is the square of that. So there is the equation for this particular circle in standard form. And if we wanted to, we could always uh, take it and put it in general form as well. That would not be difficult. So we'll use the same um, f minus l squared uh, that we used in the last one. So we get f squared minus 2fl plus l squared. So we get x squared minus 2 times 1 half times x plus 1 half squared plus y squared minus 2 times 5 4 times y plus 5 4 squared equals um, 1 half so we get x squared minus the 2 times 1 half gives us 1 so x plus 1 fourth plus y squared 2 times 5 fourth right here notice that it gives us 5 halves so minus 5 half y plus 25 over 16 equals 1 half. So um, now we'll go ahead and put the square terms next to each other. So x squared plus y squared. Then the x term and the y term. And then we'll go ahead and lump the constants next to each other. So plus 1 fourth plus 25 over 16 and then minus one half equals zero. So now we'll go ahead and combine all those constants. So we notice that the common denominator is 16, so we're going to have to multiply by four on those. No, no, nothing needed on the middle one. On the last one, we're going to have to multiply by 8. So we end up with um, 4 plus 25 minus 8. Equals 0. So we get x squared plus y squared minus x minus 5 half y plus 29 minus 8 is 21 over 16 equals 0. Now a lot of times what um, Mathematicians like to do is give the this form without any fractions. So at this point, we could simply just go ahead and multiply both sides by 16 to eliminate all fractions. So we want to make sure we distribute. So 16 is basically going to get multiplied by each of these terms. And 
and of course on both sides so finally we end up with 16x squared plus 16y squared minus 16x the 2 and 16 give us 8 times 5 is 40 so minus 40y plus those 16s cancel out completely so plus 21 equals 0 so that we, what we have on the bottom there is the general form of the equation of the same circle now good news for you on much of the homework that's assigned uh, in this day and age is that that you usually don't have to go through this but i would be selling you short if i didn't actually show you how to do it it's great practice for any of you who are serious about mathematics to be able to do something like this but in reality most of the time this is the answer that is asked for in most homework assignments all right the last thing we want to cover in this video is the fact that as we've already mentioned sometimes uh, equations of circles are not given in this nice easy to apply form they're given in this form so we need to know how to take an equation given to us in that form and put it in this form so that we can actually find uh, the center and the radius and quickly graph the circle now we did go the other way on the last couple of problems and we went from this to that so basically we're going to reverse that process now and find uh, this form given that form all right so the way we're going to approach this uh, situation is using an old technique we're familiar with which is the method of completing the square so we're going to be doing it in this way so here's the equation of a circle given to us in general form we're going to put it in standard x quantity x minus h squared plus quantity y minus k squared equals r squared form so the way we'll do it is we'll go ahead and put the x squared and the x term next to each other we'll go ahead and leave some space because we're going to be completing the square and then we'll write plus now we'll put the eight, the y terms next to each other so y squared plus 8y again we're going to leave some space because we're going to complete the square right now we're going to go ahead and take that negative 8 to the other side so it becomes positive 8 all right so now we're going to complete the square twice so to complete the square on the x squared plus x term we know that we have to take one half of two which is one and then square that to get one and to complete the square on the y terms so this was for x and now we'll do it for y so we're going to take one half of eight which is four and we're going to square that to get 16. So we notice that we need to add one here and 16 here. So of course we immediately will do the same to the other side to keep our equation balanced and equivalent to the previous equation. So we end up with, notice we added 17 on the left we added 17 on the right so we haven't really changed uh, the nature of the equation at all all right so but it is a very helpful type of uh, change because now we have a perfect square trinomial here and we have a perfect square trinomial here so we know that um, this first perfect square trinomial can be written as x plus 1 squared and that's of course because we know that f plus l squared is f squared plus 2fl plus l squared we're going in this direction when we do that and the second uh, perfect square trinomial we know we can write as y plus 4 squared and on the right side we have 9 plus 16 which is 25 so basically we've written it in standard uh, form if you really want to put it in standard form you know you have to write them as differences so you could go x minus negative one quantity of course x minus negative one squared plus 
quantity y minus negative 4 squared equals 5 squared. Now that's completely in standard form and you can see that h is going to be negative 1 and k is going to be negative 4. So the center will be at negative 1, negative 4, which is what we have here. And the radius is 5. So basically from there, go 5 to the right, 5 to the left, up 5, down 5, and you'll get the 4 points and you'll graph it. I'll leave the finding of the east, west, north, and south points for you to play with. All right, so we'll do one more, and that's going to be it for today. All right, so just wanted to look at a special case like this where the, no, the coefficients here, notice, are not 1. So this just needs one extra little step, so I just wanted to make sure you know how to deal with that. So we'll go ahead and just divide both sides by 2 before we do anything else. And of course on this side it splits up and every term is going to get divided by 2. So we get x squared plus y squared minus 10x minus 8y minus 59 equals 0. So now we proceed just as we did in the previous problem. So we'll go ahead and put the x squared and the minus 10x next to each other, leave some space for completing the square, then put the y squared minus 8y together, leave some space again, move the negative 59 to the other side to become positive 59. We'll complete the square on x, which means take one half of negative 10, which is negative five, and then go ahead and square that to get 25. We'll also complete the square on y. So we're going to take one half of negative eight, which is negative four, and we're going to square that to get 16. So we can see that we need to add a 25 here, and a 16 here and of course immediately both of them need to get added to the right side as well so we have two perfect square trinomials on the left side now which can be written as quantity x minus 5 squared plus quantity y minus 4 squared and on the other side, we just go ahead and combine all of that to get, that's 41 and 59, so that should be 100. So now we can see this is uh, very much in standard form. You can see 100, you can write it as 10 squared, but normally we don't go through that step. We just leave it like this. So we can see the center is at 5, 4, as we can see here and the radius is 10. So as you know, you would just go 10 to the right, 10 to the left, up 10, down 10 to get your four points. That's going to help you um, graph them at the circle and that should basically be it. So it's very simple. All right, so that pretty much brings our entire uh, course to a wrap. I wish you all uh, great success and happiness in life. Hopefully we'll see you in another class. Be safe.